Welcome back. Today we are going to explain a 2021 Dutch movie called Fairy. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens on a campsite in Brabant, Belgium. We see Fairy as a child running to hide from his abusive father. His father beats his mother and sister, and we see Fairy come out from hiding, holding a gun and threatening to use it on his father. The next scene fast forwards to the modern day Fairy in Amsterdam, Holland. The city that never sleeps, a paradise for the youth culture. Ferry had grown up to be a ruthless hitman and enforcer for a gangster named Brink. Brink was a wealthy gangster and had several businesses under his portfolio. He owned cafes, restaurants, nightclubs, strip clubs and was one of the largest distributors of drugs in the city of Amsterdam. Brink was Ferry's boss and mentor. Ferry looked up to Brink as a father figure and was extremely loyal to him. In return, Ferry enjoyed a luxurious lifestyle with everything in abundance. During the day, Ferry served as Brink's right-hand man and enforcer. Following Brink on his rounds to collect payments and ensure the business is operating successfully. And at night, Ferry, Brink and the gang would party the night away like they own the city. The gang consisted of Olaf, Robert, and Rico. Brink's had a son named Matthias who was also a member of the gang. Life was good for Ferry and his boss. Business was booming and they were enjoying a mundane life. Then one afternoon, while trying to enjoy an exciting football match, three thugs armed with automatic weapons, storm their safe house to pull a robbery. While they are looting the money from the safe, Brink tries to reach for a gun under the table but gets spotted by the robbers, and in the confusion, his son Matthias ends up getting shot in the chest. The robbers grab the money and leave. Ferry tries to go after them, but they manage to get away. Brink and Ferry rush Matthias to the hospital where he ends up in a coma, fighting for his life. At the hospital, Brink is fuming with anger over the robbery and Matthias getting shot. He is also puzzled as to how the robbers could have known about his safe house. He tells Ferry that there must be a snitch in the gang. The robbers had a southern accent suggesting they were from Brabant in Belgium. And given that Ferry is from Brabant, he orders him to go back to his hometown to find the thugs, find out who the snitch is and get revenge for Matthias. Ferry uses CCTV footage from the safe house to spot the driver in the getaway vehicle. He then heads south towards his home region in Brabant to find the thugs and get revenge on behalf of Brink. He meets his sister, Claudia, and John, Claudia's husband, an old friend of Ferry and former member of the gang. Ferry shows John the camera footage for him to identify and locate the getaway driver. Ferry then goes to chat with his sister Claudia. Claudia is suffering from cancer, and her mood swings cause Ferry to have an outburst and leave. By that time, John identifies a guy named Jason Kant as the getaway driver from the robbery footage. He tells Ferry about the campsite that Jason usually stays, and Ferry heads out to hunt down Jason. Ferry rents a caravan in Brabant next to Jason's and goes out to explore the nearby fair. At the fair, he sees a man fighting a woman, and Ferry reaches out to save the woman by giving the guy a beating and a telling off. The woman's name is Danielle, another resident in the camp. Ferry introduces himself, and Danielle is grateful for his help against her ex-boyfriend. She tells Ferry that she is the caretaker of the caravans at the camp. They chat briefly and Ferry leaves. Ferry patiently waits for Jason throughout the night, but Jason never shows up. Early the next day, he stages a robbery at Jason's caravan. He then tells Danielle, as the caretaker, to call Jason and inform him that his caravan has been robbed, to lure him out. As Jason shows up to the camp in his car, Ferry surprises him and directs him to an isolated location while pointing a gun at him. Ferry questions Jason for answers and ends up throwing him off a cliff. Ferry tortures and questions him to know who the snitch was and where to find the other members of his crew. Jason stubbornly refuses to reveal any information and Ferry ends up killing him in frustration. Jason dies without informing him about the snitch. Ferry then retrieves Jason's phone and sees a number that Jason had been texting with about the robbery. Ferry comes back to the camp and comes across Danielle. She sees the bruises on his face from his altercation with Jason and she offers to nurse his wounds for helping her the night before. They start to get to know each other and enjoy each other's company. Later, Ferry goes to his sister's house to meet with John. He gives him the number he retrieved from Jason's phone to find the owner. He then goes inside to see his sister. He starts off feeling sorry for her about her cancer and apologizes for being away for so long but her mood swings about her illness cause him to walk out in anger again. Ferry then goes back to the camp and heads to the fair to see Danielle at her booth. This time their conversation goes deeper, they click and end up having a good time. 
they do ecstasy and get to know each other. They dance the night away and end up shacked up in bed the next morning. Ferry takes Danielle's dog for a walk and gets a call from John who had managed to track down the owner of the phone number. The number belonged to a young man named Davy, and John sends Ferry the address. Ferry tracks down Davy at his caravan. He pretends to be a delivery man with a package for Davy. He busts his way in and ends up getting the better of Davy. He beats him and questions him for answers. Davy finally reveals that it was Matthias, his boss's son, that put them up to the robbery. The whole plan was set up by Matthias, to cover his gambling addiction after Brink had cut him off his allowance. Ferry is shocked by this discovery. He asks Davy for the name of the third member of his crew. Davy tells him that the third kid is named Lars Van Marken. Davy pleads for his life, but Ferry shoots him dead from point-blank range. Ferry is overwhelmed with conflicting emotions. In the space of 48 hours, he found out his sister had cancer, he had fallen in love with Danielle, and now just discovered that Matthias, his boss's son, was the snitch in his gang. Just as he thought things couldn't possibly get worse, he gets a call from Brink informing him that Matthias, had just passed away at the hospital. Brink asks for an update on his mission. Ferry can't bring himself to tell him that it was his son that ordered the robbery and hides this information for the time being. Ferry offers his condolences and informs Brink that he had killed two of the robbers, but there was still one guy left called Lars Van Marken. Enraged by the death of Matthias, Brink tells him to make him suffer before he kills him. Ferry goes back to the camp and goes to find Danielle and try to relax. The two enjoy a meal and watch some TV together, and Ferry promises to take her with him to Amsterdam for a short trip. As they kiss and cuddle, Danielle's brother arrives and walks in on them. He brings Danielle a gift, and Danielle introduces him to Ferry. As Ferry shakes his hand, the man introduces himself as Lars. Ferry recalls the name that Davy had given him. He checks Danielle's mail to discover that her surname was Van Marken, making Danielle's brother, Lars Van Marken, the third member of the crew that robbed his boss at the safe house. Lars in turn gets suspicious when he finds out that Ferry is from Amsterdam, and Jason had been missing all day. Lars soon realizes that Ferry must have been sent by Brink following the robbery. He soon makes an excuse and leaves abruptly. Ferry in turn also makes an excuse to leave and goes to hunt down Lars. He catches up to Lars in the woods. They get into a fight and Ferry gets the better of him. Ferry is at a crossroads and has to make a life-changing decision. Either to get revenge for his boss, or spare the life of the brother of the woman he had just fallen in love with. Driven by his love of Danielle, Ferry spares his life and leaves. He packs up to leave the camp and head back to Amsterdam. Before leaving, he abruptly cuts off all communication and connection with Danielle and tells her she would never see him again. He goes back to Amsterdam and meets up with Brink and the gang. Two of his murders had made it to the news. Brink inquires about the fate of Lars Van Marken. Ferry lies, telling Brink that he had killed him in the woods. Ferry also hides that it was in fact Matthias that gave up the location of the safe house telling Brink that the robbers must have been following their movements for a long time. Ferry goes home and calls his sister. He apologizes for losing his temper at her house and learns more about her cancer. Over the next couple of months, Ferry gets depressed. His mental health disrupted by the discoveries he made at the camp. He tries to block his emotions using alcohol and drugs. He spends his days drinking and reminiscing about Danielle and how he had spared her brother's life. He starts showing up to work late and being absent, much to the dislike of Brink. He was still very much in love with Danielle but knew that she would be safest away from him. Two months later, Danielle visits Amsterdam with her friends and coincidentally bumps into Ferry. As Ferry apologizes for leaving, his associate Rico, joins in on their conversation to tell him it's time for their meeting. Danielle introduces herself to Rico, as Danielle Van Marken. Rico then links Danielle's surname, Van Marken, with the third robber from the safe house and informs Brink. Brink, in the end, connects the dots and questions Ferry. Ferry confesses that he didn't kill Lars because he was just a driver and not the shooter. He also reveals that it was Brink's backstabbing son, Matthias, who planned the robbery in the first place. Brink does not believe him and is furious. He gives Ferry one last chance to go kill Lars and Danielle, but Ferry refuses. As tension mounts between them, Brink orders Olaf to go kill Danielle and orders the other two to kill Ferry. They put a plastic over his head to suffocate him, but Ferry manages to fight them off and kill Rico and his associate. He then walks outside to kill Brink and he catches up to Olaf at the traffic lights and kills him. Ferry then goes to the hotel to see Danielle. 
He apologizes for leaving her and tells her he loves her. They kiss and make up. Ferry and Danielle leave Amsterdam and return to Brabant. He introduces Danielle to his sister, Claudia, and hints at a possible marriage between the two. In the final shot we see Ferry and Danielle's brother, Lars Van Markham, working together in a lab to set up an ecstasy business.